welcome back to side quests tonight we are once again playing root uh and uh yeah that's that's about all i need to say let's get back into the action um but before that let's have everybody introduce who they will be playing uh starting with crystal i am playing a mouse named daisy she's a raider she really likes the sound of uh jewels and coins in her pocket and she likes treasure she wears some bulky armor to make herself look bigger than she is because she likes to act like she can fight <laughs> and act tougher than she is she's got a big axe uh, a newly acquired awesome shield with spikes spikes that was last time um, I don't know that's the gist of it right <laughs> Oh, she yep. has like a little cape. Yep, she does. Doug, who are you playing? I am playing Roderick the Bat. Roderick is a harrier, which means that Roderick likes to cause a little trouble, uh, cause a little turmoil within the uh, the kingdoms of uh, of the uh, what do we call it? The woodland. Yep. Um, currently in Pelinki Glade, and uh, Roderick, I think, uh, has big dreams of. Of uh, being a powerful uh, ruler of of the woodland, we'll see if that happens. But we'll see. with the help of with the help of David and Daisy, maybe it'll happen. And Two followers will follow you blind anywhere. That's what he wants to hear. Last but not least, Andrew, who are you playing? I'm playing David Todd Tottenson, a red fox ranger with a grizzled military past and a hatred for Dridge. Now Count, formerly Captain. And, yeah. Got a fancy bow in our last session. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that. And recently figured out how to disappear into darkness. As all yes. good rangers do. Roderick, Daisy, and David found their way to Pelinicky Glade. A... Uh, region of the woodland not yet touched by the war raging across the lands. They found out that the mayor had been murdered and were hired to investigate. As they dug deeper into the crime, they found a bit of a conspiracy with the Irie dynasties sending their people to... Um, caused turmoil in the glade so that they could take over. They found their way underground and met with resistance fighters in the Woodland Alliance and discovered that an assassin was after the person who hired them, uh, Captain Wosi of the Glade Guard. In our last session, they spent a bit of time underground. After having rescued Wosi, they discovered some treasure left by the assassin, the Silent Paw, and as they got back to the Woodland Alliance in the Underground River, the bells that signaled that the uh, revolution had begun began rang ringing uh, unexpectedly. They made their way up to the surface and found Count Dridge in the center of the square, calling David Todd Tottenson out. And as David disappeared into the darkness, the youngest goshawk, Callum, brought forth Wosi, knelt him on the ground, and lifted the goshawk family long blade, ready to strike. David disappeared into the darkness, and in the silence, of the night, you could only hear the of a arrow shooting from a bow, the whistle of the fletching in the air. The arrow struck the netting that uh, covers the sky of the glade, piercing it, and as it began to fall, the arrow continued on its path, finding a weak spot in Count Dridge's armor. The netting fell. 
Callum moved to safety. And as the nets fell, the sounds of trapdoors and the sounds of the um, rising uh, rebellion around the square um, rose up and Dridge made eye contact with David as David stepped out of the shadows. Uh, he needed to know it was me. I mean, he already knew it was me, but he needed to know it was me. If you get what I mean. There are shouts from around the square as the uh, Alliance members uh, descend on the Irie. The crowd uh, begins to panic. There are people who are part of the Alliance here, but there are also just regular civilians, people who don't want to be part of the fight. Um, they have stakes. There are things at stake, but not uh, uh, they're not part of the Alliance. Um, it is. It begins to be chaotic as Dridge pulls the arrow from that gap in his armor and tosses it to the ground. He flaps down. Callum backs up, trying not to get tangled into the nets, and uh, Wosi um, begins to search for an opportunity to escape, though two of the Irie soldiers hold on to his upper arms tight. What would you like to do? Uh, I think for the next thing David would like to do is he would like to take a shot at those two uh, hawks holding Wosi. Get him free. The more pandemonium, the better. And Wosi is a capable fighter. I'll take that roll. What are you going to do? Okay. I'm going to remember how to play <laughs> this game. So you have uh, you have your moves. You've got threatening visage, dirty fighter, and silent pause. You've mm -hmm. got uh, a number of um, uh, weapon moves that you can attempt. Um, some of them only work with your particular weapon, like I believe you have quick shot. Mm -hmm. um, target someone is something you can do, and whatever you do, you're going to roll two dice. Yep, got two dice here. Um, does it have to be if I use the bow does it have to be like a quick shot or trick shot or is there just like a fire bow at person uh, that would be target someone target someone that you makes roll a lot with of finesse. sense aha uh -huh. alright we'll do that alright so you're rolling your two dice, you're adding your finesse. I'm adding my finesse, and I currently have out the Royal Oak bow You've that got I got. You've got the fancy weapon. Got the fancy weapon. Da, 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 da. Heavy draw. Turn it off. Okay. I have a set, an eight. An eight, including your finesse? An eight. Including my finesse. All right, so you inflict some injury. Um, your bow is fancy. How fancy is it? Um, Very fancy. Uh, you may, if you desire, mark an exhaustion to inflict an additional injury. Um, or mark an exhaustion to uh, target a specific body part and impair it. Or you can just hit once. Does Wosi get free hitting once? Or no. do I need to... You would have to hit okay. two times. That makes sense. So I think I would mark exhaustion for my extra injury then. Okay. Uh, tell me what happens. So David's moving much quicker than folks have seen this old fox move before. Uh He's taken his shot at Dridge, stepped out of the shadows, 
into full view of everyone and then seeing Woezy uh, being held down by these two, uh, what were they, hawks? Sure. These two birds. Mm-hmm. Whoever. The scene was he held down. Uh, and he, in quick succession, notches another arrow and fi- fires it, uh, targeting the angle for their hands. So it can kind of, you know, pass through one wing into the other wing, just over Wozi's back. Single shot accurate. for both of them. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, Wosi, as these two birds let go, he um, uh, falls forward onto the ground and begins to pick himself up. Uh, Dridge lands close to David. And he smooths his feathers back and says, "Ah, David, I thought I spotted you earlier. I told you, if you came back, what would happen? If I saw your ugly beak again. Well, I'm here here now. Mm -hmm. Hey. Here we are. And he brandishes his axe. What would Roderick like to do? There are birds in shining armor and iry blue uh, around the square. Small fights have started with members of the Alliance. You see uh, Dooley with his enormous blacksmith hammer. And you see uh, Osha with a, uh, a um, nice um, uh, mouse smith sword that you saw over the mantle of the Rootbound Inn earlier tonight. Um, what's Roderick going to do? <clears throat> Can Roderick try and get to Callum Gossock? Do you want to parkour? Yeah, I want to parkour. <laughs> Tell me what you do, and let's get a roll. Okay. Uh, you want me to tell you what I'm going to do and then roll? Or... Uh, roll and tell you what I'm going to do. Tell me what you want to do. Roll and we'll see what what happens. I want Roderick to maneuver through this chaotic scene. Mm-hmm. Um, through flying, climbing, walking. And make his way to Calum before Calum can uh, presumably disappear into the shadows. Uh, okay. Or fight or whatever. I don't know what they're doing. Let's get that roll. So you're rolling with finesse. You're rolling two dice and adding your finesse. Okay. My finesse is really good. So, fingers crossed. So between you and Callum, before you finish rolling, before mm-hmm. you tell me the results, uh, there is a uh, a group of people fighting. The yes. Irie and the Woodland Alliance. There is uh, a large pile of netting on the ground as well that you see is, mm-hmm. is, uh, is tripping a few people up. Mm-hmm. Um, there are those two birds that were moments ago holding on to Captain Wosi, and then um, Callum is behind them, still holding this large, gleaming sword. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I rolled, I rolled a nine, and plus my finesse of three is a twelve. Okay, so for this move, you get to now hold three. Um, you can spend your hold uh, to dash to something within sight, reach it without it being stopped, or to dash away from something nearby without being stopped. You can dash away from an enemy even at the moment they attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hold is one of the only things I don't really understand about this game. Um, So, you have three imaginary tokens. You may spend one of your imaginary tokens to get to something that is uh, within your sight line. Mm -hmm. Or to escape from an enemy before they attack you. Mm Mm-hmm. You could have um, so, actual tokens. 
So they want, I get, I think I get it. So the way that they want me to use it is I would say, okay, I am going to spend one hold to jump and fly to the top of, uh, or around the fighting, the Mm -hmm. fighting. I'm going to spend another one to get to the top of this net that has uh, collapsed and the debris around it. And then I'm going to spend the third one to try and get as close to... Is this is this how you're close. supposed to do it? Close. Okay. If, if we're reading this correctly, you can dash to something within sight. Callum is within sight. So you spend one hold to, to okay. describe how you get to Callum. And then you hold on to those other okay. two for use later. Okay. So don't have to be all so I also kind of thought it worked this way because I, I, th- I thought I almost caught up to the silent paw using one close um the silent paw was okay. not within sight okay so i just caught up to i caught up to callum yeah how did you do that uh, what did you do roderick um i think roderick is kind of running with the rest of the um woodland alliance troops as they're sort of charging into battle and meeting with the iry and you can hear the swords clashing around um roderick but I think as soon as the he enters like the thick of the fray, he takes off a little bit off the ground with his bat wings, and he's hovering pretty um, pretty close to the fighting, trying to stay low so he doesn't get hit by a by an arrow, and does a little bit of diving, a little bit of a, maybe a sword swings towards him, and he flies uh, under it. Now maybe he flies back low into combat and it's kind of dodging like yeah I guess like, like right above the ground in the air yeah a little spin um a maybe trick. uh comes up and uh the the netting that has fallen he has to climb up as fast as he can with his little claws and then takes off again and has a nice um he 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 has the high ground now and uh kind of does a little short dive bomb towards Callum. What is Daisy doing? Um, well, she, uh, she was watching, but she's ready to get in the mix of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I heard that there are groups of people and she has lots of cool things she can do with groups of things. It's so true. I was just going to ask you how There are a couple of groups of bad guys. Yeah. Wait, which they're different different groups? Yeah. Well, like the like the soldiers holding. Yeah. So some little skirmishes how, how have groups? broken and broken up uh, throughout this uh, center. Um, if you were to listen with your big mouse ears, you could also hear some distant fighting. The sound of the bell has stopped. Oh. And there's. Why did it stop? And what's the fighting? How do I? What do, do you want to go that? go find out? Oh man, I mean, she always wants to just help Roderick. Like she's it's just true. really attached. So I want to go find out, but I don't know if she would. Um, how much do y'all? Ne- <laughs> here, I'm gonna yell out. <laughs> <laughs> Am I needed here? <laughs> do, you, do you need help, or should I go find out what's going on? <laughs> There's a noise in the distance. Uh, you aim that question towards the f- uh, little skirmish that My contains. Friends. Oh, to your two friends. Okay, cool. Who did you think I was talking to? Uh, people who are closer to you. Oh, I don't care about <laughs> strangers. Just run away from me. <laughs> I'm nearby. I'm like off at the side okay. of the clearing. Like I picture, there's like a a town square. Mm-hmm. The owl came down. They're like in there, and she's just on the edge waiting to jump in. Okay. Right? I don't know. And so, to my friends who I care so much about, <laughs> You're am I friend. needed? Like, do, do you, how, I can't really tell where they're at right now. Are they? Maybe Roderick fighting? is close enough when, when this question is yeah. asked. Roderick is flying overhead. I think David is a bit occupied. I do have a question, though. When he, like last time, when he shot the owl Mm -hmm. in his weak spot or whatever, did that hurt him? Yes. Did it do anything? It did. 
I didn't really hear that noted that it actually hurt him. Uh, <laughs> he just pulled it out. Oh yeah, he pulled it out. He brushed it off. So not a big deal. He's a tough bird. He's a tough bird. <laughs> it's a shame. And you. So, Dave shot at some. And he's talk. He shot at the uh, the things holding Wosi, and he mm-hmm. talked to the. He's talking to Dridge, and Rod's flying in. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I should jump in and start fighting and wielding my axe, or if I should go off and split up and find out what's going on. What do you say, Roger? What would Daisy do? She would yell out and ask if, <laughs> if you need backup. I think Roderick yells something like, Go wherever is most helpful and constructive, Daisy. <laughs> Super helpful. So you you don't need me, right? You, you got this covered, Rod? You feel good? Um... Do you need backup? The, the Woodland Alliance is doing doing what they were asked. You know, do do what you do what feels right. Okay. You must do what reclaim what the skies, Daisy. Right, of course. <laughs> Damn the consequences. Okay, I'm gonna go. Since you guys aren't hearing this, there's some battle in the distance. She really wanted to run in, I think, and just start chopping things up, but. There's interesting things going on, so we'll, we'll go find out. Uh, as a as a, just a little itty bitty reminder, about midway through our last session, you all had the discussion of, do we really care about the Woodland Alliance? And the answer was, no. <laughs> just to right. throw that out there. Yeah, I, I haven't forgotten about that. Okay, I mean, in in that regard, you know. Don't don't confuse us, Mark. Oh yeah, no, no, I know what Roderick's up what, to. <laughs> what is our what is our goal ultimately? Anyway, uh, reclaim the skies. Yeah, spider reclaim rings. The skies. Spider, spider rings. <laughs> Roderick just wants treasure to rule people. It seems. Uh-huh. <laughs> just wants more yeah. followers. Okay, so very honestly, I don't care about what's happening in the distance, except that you brought it up, and it's. Now I wonder if it's something interesting. There's an interesting thing happening over there. If it's not interesting, I just want to shoot some missiles, do some damage, and <laughs> uh, fight with my with my buds, and then get some treasure maybe if I can. <laughs> Daisy runs off towards okay. <laughs> the sound towards the sound of battle, uh, spotting the bell tower in the distance. Uh, looks. Um, somewhat uh, uncared for. Um, you can see roots of plants t- uh, twining in and out between the bricks and vines climbing up the sides of it. And as you approach, you can see the gleams of metal and the shouts of a fight happening on the interior of this. In the old tower? Yeah. That sounds like tight quarters. Yes. Do you want to? Do you want to barrel in? What do you? What is Daisy's plan here? Well, she doesn't want to be stupid and get hurt, like needlessly get hurt. Um, can, I'm like, can she move like an actual mouse and just like run straight up the wall of the tower? I think that would be a an acrobatics, uh, roguish feat. Or is there a lower window she could just kind of peek in real quick? There's a door. See what's well, that's too obvious. Well, she does see that there is fighting. She sees that because the moon is full and the uh, light from it is bright. And she can see the reflections of weapons and armor on the inside as as people move around in there. Okay. She makes sure her new shield is um, held aloft in front of her. And she says, consequences be damned. And she swings the door open. And just, like, expecting everyone to stop and look at her. Like, oh, goody, a fight. (laughs) And she swings the door open. What does she see? She sees a few members of the Glade Guard fighting off uh, more than a few members of the, uh, excuse me, the Irie. Um, They are Mm. definitely outnumbered. And... um, yeah, so the Irie are uh, at the bottom of the stairs, working their way up. The 
uh, glade guard are up the stairs. You see the uh, uh, the bodies of a few glade guard on the ground scattered around the space as well. Okay. I think as they fight, the lowest one turns towards you and brandishes a sword. Oh, well, here we are. Big Some mistake. bird. Big mistake. Huge. Are <laughs> <laughs> um, you trying to purchase a pewter figurine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Does this get to count as storming a group of foes oh, in yeah, melee? For sure. Oh wait, should I do that? As long as you engaged? describe yourself as storming a group of foes in melee. Yeah, that's what you're doing. What's the difference between that and just engaging an enemy in melee? Um storming, charging forward, probably with your shield out with its spikes out. Um. Oh, so do, how do these things mix? Like, I have a move that says "I for battle." When you read a tense situation, just as violence breaks out, roll with might. Is that like on top of one of these other like weapon moves, or are those two separate things? Those are separate things. Um, that would be. Uh, you you could have used that as soon as David shot his arrow, probably. Um, That's what I was waiting to do, and then you were like, you should go somewhere else, so I did that. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, That's cool. I would say that since you are entering this battle for the first time now, you could roll that. You are okay. getting in there. You can read this tense situation uh, if you desire. Which just sounds so silly for someone who just likes to run in. Like, who just or you can just attack. Situations? Yeah. Just attack. Just, but, just um, storm the group. Reading the situation gives you um, question options. You can see who's the biggest threat, what's the best way to do things, who, who's the easiest target. Um, and then if you act on those questions, you get a bonus on your roll. Or yeah. if they're all dead, you don't have to ask any questions. Or that. Okay. I think... Yeah, let's storm the group. I know the only one is like turned to engage her thus far, but she's just gonna. She's so overly confident. She's got her thing and her axe, and she's gonna be like, "Oh, you're fighting me!" Like she's gonna in her head before this happens. She's hoping that she can just like whack that guy and then just like ram through the rest of knock over the rest of the Irie with her shield all in one fell swoop. We'll see. I'm sure that's not possible, but uh, that's what she she's, she thinks grand things. So you want to roll, and you want to get a higher than a seven. Okay. And you add your might. So add plus two. Thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah. Holy moly. You got a five and a six plus two. Okay. Bud. Uh... All right, so on a on a hit, trade harm, so you hit each other, but yep. since you got Wait. higher than a nine, you get a ten plus. You get to do some extra stuff. When it says on a hit, does it mean like when someone hits me? What does it mean on a hit? On a hit is what? anything above uh, seven and above. Oh, that's just so seven plus is okay. considered a hit for most things. Okay. So you're gonna take. Uh, you, your choice of injury or exhaustion, um, or um, swap out some wear on your armor or shield. And uh, so are they. Hmm. I, I get one. I have to pick between injury or exhaustion? Yes. Or wear one of the checkboxes on your armor or shield. So your armor has three wear, your shield has I'm going to do an injury. No, that's not right. She's not injured. She's Injury's, just a little tired. Yeah, you probably want to do exhaustion if you have the option. I do. Okay. Um, and since you rolled so well, you get the, the choice of two of the following. You show them up. You inflict two 
morale harm to them. That's one. You keep them off balance and confused and inflict two exhaustion. You avoid their blows to the best of your ability and suffer minus one harm. Or you use them against each other, mark one more exhaustion, and they inflict harm against themselves. Choose two. Ooh, this is a nice, this is nice. Okay. <laughs> I want to do the top one and the last one, right? So you're going to... Uh, show them up in... Like, yeah. So she is so awesome, yep. and they are so beneath her that they are just quivering with fear. <laughs> what has just come in and startled us all, and who is this? And then um, they are all, I don't know how it works, but somehow they all turn on each other <laughs> and also uh, hurt each other. So, like, you storm into this fight, you are going to like knock their swords into each other and like basically knock them into each other. Right. Okay. That, that's what so that I, last one yeah. would be. Uh, you want to describe what happens? Yeah. So her very first thing was to just swing her ax at the first person that you said showed their sword at her gone. And then, uses her Go big on. spiky shield and just starts like pummeling people and it's like dominoes they kind of like hit into each other and maybe trip and a few people get hurt i don't know how much harm i get to do or how many people get to hurt each other but they inflict their harm they have a set number of harm which they actually uh, they don't inflict a, one harm on you they inflict four that on you me? have yeah that you, you have to split between Exhaustion, what? injury, and your uh, your gear. Oh, I thought I was. I thought this was all just reward. Not no, consequence. no. You also uh, for storming a group take one exhaustion. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so let me let me tell you. So you you took harm. Yes, they took two wear on their armor. They took uh -huh. two uh, marks to their morale. They also took three hits of exhaustion. Any further exhaustion that you uh, deal to them is an injury automatically. They can only take a little bit more, uh, like their, their shields and armor can only take a little bit more. And if you, uh, if you were to do the same thing again, they would just run away. You did very well, but yeah. it cost you. So, okay. I didn't uh, expect that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't just hit them. You exchange blows. They... Um, they I mean, it's a really big, heavy shield. It yeah. probably bruised my arm a little. Well, it's a tight space, too, so um, you're <laughs> knocking against them. They're knocking against the wall. They're swinging their swords at you, and uh, there are a lot of elbows and uh, shoulders and uh, metal-covered knees and stuff in this, this space. This is battle. Yeah, this yeah. is a battle. This is rough. This is the choreographed action set piece for this section of this episode. Uh-huh. You know, you're ducking down low. You're they're swinging. Yeah, you know, all that. It's, she doesn't wear armor for nothing. She's ready. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside, who would like to go next? I think David. Here, I want to. I, I, I don't know, know what Roderick's up to. Roderick seems to have some sort of plan here. <laughs> uh, sure. Roderick's always got a plan. I think Roderick is trying to catch up to Calum and Callum and every time. That was the first time, but it won't be the last. This episode. Uh, <laughs> this episode. Um, catch up to Callum and maybe try and get some answers and maybe try and if Callum's the one that's, you know, behind this this sorta coup of Pelinicky Glade, um, maybe stop it before it gets uh, any more violent. Maybe you know if that happens to um, put uh, Roderick in more of a position of power in Pelinicky Glade, then you know that's all just uh, that's just uh, that's just the gravy on top. Uh, so what do you want to roll? So has he completely caught up to him? Yeah. 
Okay. Does does Callum like see him coming, or does that depend on what uh, Roderick's gonna do? It depends on what you're gonna do. If you're gonna attack, I think Roderick's could, gonna could try and. To... I think he's gonna try and disarm with that okay. big shiny sword you keep mentioning. So let's see. That is one of my weapons. Yeah, your skill axe tags. does have disarm, so you're going to move in. Uh, completing your spending of one of your holds, your first your first of three is spent, and you're going to uh, roll and add your finesse. All right. Wow. I rolled really, really, really bad. Oh, I was excited for you. That, well, that could have been great. I got a three uh -huh. with two dice. I got a one and a two. And so plus my finesse is a six. Six still does not do it. Um, okay. So you um, you move in. Uh, what do you try to do? Um, Roderick, I think, is moving in from a little bit above Callum. And he aims his, his axe at a part of this um, sword Callum is brandishing that will, like, hitting it on, sort of on the back in a way that will hopefully knock it away from Callum's hands. That's uh, what he wants to do. And as you uh, attempt to do that, Callum sees you coming. And he, he... You can tell from the way he fights that he is not a great fighter. But he sees your axe coming, sees you attempting to, to uh, disarm, and he um, spins the sword out of the way and catches you with it. Dealing two injury. Okay. And he says, who are you? I don't recognize you from the glade. Uh, well, we are new to Pen Peloniki Glade, but that that's going to change soon. The name's Roderick Callum. He points his sword at you. Callum. Alliance scum. Ah. <gasps> And, uh, you ready? Your, uh, your reputation with the Irie just went down. That's great. That's great news. <laughs> <laughs> we like it when that happens. You do like it when that happens. Um, I think something might happen every time that happens to me. Um... His reputation with the Irie went down? Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is one of my drives, infamy. Yep. <laughs> Advance when you decrease your reputation with any faction. Yep. That's awesome. So That's you funny. get to choose an advancement. You already took Don't Shoot the Messenger. Now you have the options of cross country as a move, uh, plus one to a stat, um, taking the roguish feats hide and sleight of hand, or taking the weapon skills harry a group and quick shot. Hide, sleight of hand, Harry, and quick shot. Yep. So Harry is um, mark wear and roll with cunning. You get to inflict more uh, morale harm or pin enemies down. Uh, quick shot, roll with luck, inflict injury, and some other bonus stuff. You also have cross country as an option, which is a, a move you can add that says take one extra box of exhaustion, and when your exhaustion track is full and you must mark exhausted, you may choose an equivalent amount of injury instead of being removed from the situation or going unconscious. Uh, can, you, can you explain cross-country to me w real quick? So You currently have four boxes of exhaustion. You would then have five. If you were about to be knocked out from... Uh, from going over your strain threshold, mm -hmm. your exhaustion, um, you would then take injury instead. 
Mm. So if I get super exhausted, I can start getting hurt instead. Yeah. Once again, mm. if you're super exhausted, you cannot do anything. And I would get an, a fifth injury yeah. box out of that? Yeah. There is, there is, I am sure, something that we're doing slightly wrong with that. But mm. <laughs> it's pre I think it's pretty close. I, for the sake of expedience, that one sounds kind of cool. Okay. Um, cross country. Sure. I imagine you are a cross country flyer, not a runner. Yeah, that's true. I don't think okay. he runs too fast. You, uh, David, here's Alliance scum from the distance, and Dridge slowly looks over his shoulder and back at David. Are you responsible for all of this? You're responsible for all of this. No, no, no. You know, we bring peace to the woodlands. Oh, I know all too well what it is that you really do when you bring peace. I told you, if we ever met again, I'd ensure it never happens. You just never had the stomach to do what was right. What was right? What was right about anything that you had us do? No, it was wrong. I'm here to stop you. You can try. He lifts his axe off to the side and puts it in front of him. What would, you, what would David like to do? Uh, David will draw his uh, fox folk longsword and attempt some kind of weapon move. Do it, Dave. Now, special moves would be require. I would require that on my weapon. To have that right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Uh, you also have your weapon skills at the top, which I think open up mm -hmm. additional we uh, weapon moves. I have a lot. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, I think at this stage it is simply engaging in a melee. Okay. So you're rolling and I you are want adding your to might. do my vicious strike, but or disarm. What is that one? That's finesse. Is, uh, but might. Mine, I mean, you are currently at close range, so you you could okay you could do vicious strike if you have that. Okay. So you would mark exhaustion, and then you would roll and add your might. Yeah. Mm, okay. This is tough, because I have two of my four exhaustion already marked. Yep. Yeah, we'll do it. David's upset. We'll mark an exhaustion. We're going to make a vicious strike with this longsword. I've got a 12. A 12. 12. You get away with the strike. Mm. Uh, okay. Um, so that's plus one harm. And they cannot block it, which is rough. <laughs> Tell me what, what happens. What weapon did you use? Hmm? trying to figure out which weapon you were using but you're about to explain so, sword. yeah david drew his uh his fox made sword and what does your sword look like mm. yeah what is your what is the history of your sword does your sword have a name Ooh. my sword should have a name yeah at this point pull out that name sheet you got there <laughs> <laughs> what uh I felt like we were on the 
the Coruscant Knights Discord. I was just going to ask the, oh, the yeah. chat to name the sword. Hey, chat. No, we can't do that because we're not live tonight. No um, let's see. What do you do? You guys have any suggestions? I'm taking suggestions. Absolutely need a name though. What tell tell us what mm. it looks like? Mm. Yeah. So, it's a pretty straightforward uh, longsword. Um, the, you know, I think it's got uh, a continuous like taper to the blade, uh, so it comes up to a very sharp looking point and triangular blade to mimic, uh, you know, a, a, a canine fang. Uh, it's got a, a leather bound handle and then a kind of oh I'm, I'm using scottish accent so i might as well have like a celtic knot uh pommel on it just call it fang uh <laughs> mark has something better <laughs> it's like I'm, all, all the ones i'm thinking are like bad guy sword names bad doombringer guys. uh uh I don't know. It's not a crusher. It's not a fighter. I keep thinking of teeth things. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of some kind of alliteration, like on Fang, like like Fate's Fang or something. I don't know. Just thinking of F words. <laughs> F and ferocious. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we're a ranger. We've got Phantom. What do you think? Oh, man. My first time naming a sword, can you tell? Uh -huh. <laughs> I've never done it either. Um, I like this. So I've got some lists here. And like the half of this one is the sw is Swift Blade. Uh huh. I feel like he's Foxes swift. are swift. Yeah. One specific fox was named Swift. I know. David the Gnome? <laughs> oh my god. It's all... It's all oh on. man, full circle. <laughs> just nickname it Swifty. Yeah, it's just we'll call Swift. it Swift Fang. We'll call it Swift okay. Fang. We've got all right. the, the Fang motif and we got the fast Great. Swift. Yeah, so so David draws Swift Fang. And uh, knowing that he injured slightly Dridge with the arrow shot and the weak part of the armor, he knows kind of where there's already an injury and with a quick feint and parry and then a stab, he's able to get right into that gap that he created with the arrow. Okay. And it pierces that spot and you are inches from Dridge, his beak in your face, his large owl eyes peering into your soul. And he, moves away from you as quickly as he can and readies his axe. And what is Daisy doing? <laughs> uh, I had it ready and now I forgot. Hold on a second. Oh. Well, I mean, we're just fighting our way through, right? I think her next thing she wants to do is cleave. But, um, I had a question because you were talking about the different harm I took. And then I, we moved on and I wasn't totally sure what to, which, how many things to check? I know that was like 10 minutes ago. So it was four. I didn't want to not check it. Um, and okay. you can take injuries, you can take exhaustion, you can take uh, wear to your armor and shield. Okay. Four total minus, le or like in addition to the very first. Yes. Exhaustion. Order. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, uh, four. Depletion isn't one of the things I can put it on, right? No. No, right. That doesn't count. Just make it sure. <laughs> Can't put them anywhere willy nilly. And then, but it, oh, sorry, in that, this Ironhide thing, it says when a group inflicts harm on you, suffer two fewer harm from each attack. Hey, does this apply? Yeah, it does. Minimum one minus harm. 
Yeah. For one harm. I don't know what that means. Okay. So but, your character I will have in front of me momentarily. Ironhide. When a group inflicts harm on you, suffer two fewer harm from each attack. Uh, to a minimum of one harm. So you still have to take harm. When you inflict harm on a group, inflict one additional harm. All right, that's important. So you only took two harm, yeah. and you can still split those how you want, and they took one extra. Cool. Which I will mark now. And as you deal that extra bit of harm, what does Daisy do next? She wants to do the... The cleave. The cleave. It's my, special wep- it's my special weapons move. When you cleave armored foes at close range, because we're all real close right now, yep. Mark. I have to mark exhaustion and roll with might. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just roll. Yep. Uh, wait, how do I know that's a special thing? So. Oh, it's under by battle axe. That's where it yep. is. Okay. I was just like, I don't see it. Why did I say that? Oh, less good. Six. Six. Plus, wait, plus something? Plus might. Is two. Is eight. Eight. That's not great. You uh, you inflict wear on their armor, and um, you overextend your weapon or yourself. So you mark wear on that weapon, uh, or end up in a bad spot your choice what does that mean end up in a bad spot it means uh you're they're they're pushing you up against a wall okay Mm. i would rather that because she's real confident she can get out of bad spots okay so i think and have to put something on the paper i think part of this bad spot is that uh as you swing your axe towards these uh irie soldiers you um you dent and ding their armor and you can see that any further attacks on them their armor is not going to do a darn thing but as you do that other ones are moving up the stairs pushing the glade guard back and you see a, a, a swift stab as one of the glade guards goes down Wosi's men are on the, at the top of the stairs, and the Irie are now between you and them, and they just took out one of Wosi's guards. Okay. The mice are at the top, the birds are on the stairs, and I'm at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Now what? <laughs> Callum oh. readies his sword. Putting it in front of him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And says, At the knave. <laughs> what does is, what is Roderick do? I just want to comment uh, my name for Roderick's axe, which I think is um, nowhere near as nice as uh, David's sword. Um, I think. I think Roderick maybe has a new axe like every couple of months because he, he throws a new name. He throws every him time. And, <laughs> he keeps throwing throws them. him and they loses him. Um, this current one, which is not that nice, but maybe a little slightly customized, is called the Victor's Chariot. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's just a tiny little axe, <laughs> and he, uh, I think uh, Roderick just got hurt, uh, injured too. That's quite a bit. He took a cut. I think he um, does a sort of anime style, like slide back on the dirt (laughs) as he like gets ready to spring forward and make his next attack. Are you going to swing the axe or throw it? Can I like, uh, can I like narratively throw it? But man, I just want to disarm again because I should have not gotten a six on that last roll. Um, this should work. You could try. Okay. Can I th- uh, throw it from a close range and see if I can knock this out of Callum's hand? I got a four, uh, which is not good. And I can add 
uh, three finesse, so I got a seven. Okay. It's also really bad, so maybe I won't disarm again. No, seven is a hit. So they have to mark exhaustion or are disarmed. And I think that... I think that Callum is not skilled enough to mark exhaustion to to do this thing. Um, so you disarm him. Tell me what happens. Uh, Callum at thee, knave. <laughs> right back at thee. <laughs> Chucks his uh, axe from a short distance. And I think that it flies hard and fast enough that I think Callum even like tries to knock knock it away, but it just knocks it right out of his hand. Yeah, it probably like knocks it towards the the tip of the weapon, and the 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 force of the blow just sort of knocks it out of Callum's hands. So Callum is disarmed. Callum is disarmed. Uh, he doesn't have that weapon. Oh, does he have other weapons? Um, what was the weapon that was in his hand? The Gossok family long blade. Ooh. He... Yeah, you hear the, the sword twang as you, you hit it with the, uh, with the um, flat of your axe, and it uh, vibrates out of Callum's hand, and Callum sort of fumbles after it. And uh, as it is knocked away, he turns and glares at you and says, You won't take away what I deserve, and I deserve Pelinicky Glade. After the way I've been treated all these years, it's the least I could get. Dridge sees things my way. Oh, Callum. I'm sure you deserve more than you were given within the Irie line, but your means, your approach, how you did this, it could only end poorly. And you he will not... confused. Uh, the way you eliminated your the lineage of the iry line systematically one by one you couldn't think that you could have gotten away with this and rose to power by such means what what are you talking about i see uh, perhaps you don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> Callum, you could not have... Who did you suspect... Who did you suspect was behind the murder of your father and brother? Zale's dead? I'm sorry to be the one to let you know, but he was... He was dispatched a few hours ago. You and the Alliance. And he's going to like start running at you to gut check you. And around the corner, David. Dridge backs up, backs up from, from David and brandishes his axe. And begins to swing it up and over his head. And it's going to strike down at David. What does David do? Hmm. Can I engage in this melee? Like, it's my choice of what to do, or do I need to figure out a way to get out of the way of the sacks? Uh, no, you can engage in melee. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Depending on how you David's roll, ready for it. the axe may hit yeah. you. Yes. Who has the axe? Dridge. Dridge. Dridge himself, okay. Dridge has an axe. So I thought, just making sure. Uh, I didn't know if he died. <laughs> it is a ceremonial war axe. You can see the moon glint off the steel as he rises it up. The um, knots and symbols in the uh, flat of the blade. The ornate decoration on the uh, the handle. 
all in the blink of an eye. And let's get your roll. All right. So I'm rolling my finesse. Really want a good roll. Uh, so you get to roll finesse nine. instead of might in this one? I believe. Oh, no, it was it's might. They're the same. Okay. So same result. A nine. Um, but yeah, I got a nine. Okay. You may choose one. Inflict serious harm. Suffer little harm, because you're going to take some. Uh, shift your range. Impress, dismay, or frighten your foe. I think I'd like to inflict serious harm. Okay. So, as Dridge swings down the axe, David feels the burn as it makes contact with him. And what does David do? I think David has calculated this as a way of creating opening. Uh, he takes the glancing blow and is able to bring his swift fang kind of up and takes another lunging stab and another weak point on Dridge's armor. You do that. If the blade sinks in and through and you feel Dridge's weight against you. And you can hear his shallow breathing as he leans against you. It says, I taught you well. Tell Dante I say hi. Pulls the blade out and lets Dridge fall to the ground. And he collapses unmoving. Daisy? Um, oh, I didn't, I didn't think ahead this time. <laughs> I mean, she's just, she's in a bad spot. If, if you're and not thinking ahead, them... do you want to just go with a basic engage in melee? Just Probably. hit them. She, yeah. She's really mad, though, because she just saw them kill somebody on the good side in front of her. She's like, no. Um. So just engage in melee. <laughs> so you're rolling, you're adding might. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six, seven, eight. 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 About last time. Eight's not Same bad. Eight. Um, all right. So. I didn't. Sorry. I noticed, I, and I never know if you already did this or not. When it says when I use my battle axe, mm -hmm. it. It costs me exhaustion when inflicting harm this whip with this weapon. So, sorry, that is something that you have the choice to do. Uh, oh, you don't have to do it. No, you may mark exhaustion to inflict additional harm. To inflict harm. Okay. All right. Yeah, you've got like a lot of those options. You've got like four different places where you can options. where you can mark exhaustion and inflict extra harm. Um, but with your um, iron hide, uh, you block all of their attacks as they, as you uh, engage with this group. They swing their blades down at you. You raise your shield, and they glance off those spikes. And you swing your axe at them, and um, inflicting your additional harm for iron hide, you take them out. Tell me what yeah. happens. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so with her newfound rage, cause she's already been, you know, she battled away from the door to the steps, mm -hmm. got that adrenaline going. And then she sees somebody get stabbed and that just like ramps her up enough to slash her way up the stairs, I guess, mm -hmm. and kill the, like throws one off the side yep. rail, yep. <laughs> tosses one <sighs> behind her. 
<laughs> or at least trips them so that she's not that strong. She's a little mouse, so she trips one and like it Oh yeah, goes you, you her. like raise your shield as they trip and just send them over over your head. Yes. <laughs> yes. Air somersaults uh-huh. all the way. And runs to the top. Is there like a leader maybe up there's there that bell. she could be like there's there's one oh. there's one guard left. Uh, there's only one the, guard the gla- left. There were only two of the glade guard. Oh. Yeah. Um, do you start ringing she the bell? Just, she runs by him like for the woodland, and like yeah. like yeah we're good, but I'm, <laughs> you can take care of yourself. <laughs> and she sees that thing and she's just like excited, so she rings the bell. And you start ringing the and bell. Then, yeah. Yeah, I think she would also want to. Just kind of look around and be like, I wonder if there's this, if this old tower has any like hidden stuff, like treasure <laughs> chests or anything up here in this attic. The bell clapper made out of gold. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you, as Daisy starts ringing the bell back in the square, um, David and Roderick can hear the bell begin to ring again, and you see lights coming on in different parts of the glade. And you can hear people coming out again. She has no idea what she's done. <laughs> what signal did she just do? <laughs> and uh, what is what is Roderick doing with Callum? As he tries um, to like run at you. Can I? Um, let's see. Can I? You got can holds, I, don't you? You do. What are my holds? You still got right two parkour four, right? holds left. Oh, oh, well, that uh, makes my ac- my actual question uh, moot. Um, I wanted to get so I have a parkour move. Yeah, I want to get to this iry longsword. Okay, and pick it up, and I want to point it between a grappling foe and I, uh, which I think is going to. I'm not, I don't really want him to like run into my sword and die. Um, but I want this to be like R- Roderick oh. rolls, picks up the sword and like has his enemy, like basically, you know, in a no win situation. Do you want to trip him up in the nets? <laughs> um, sure. I mean, if I can get, if I can get my enemy, can can I, can I, roll pick up the sword and cut a rope with a second hold and like send a like a net system sort of uh down on him or you can spend a hold to uh get away from his charge and get to the sword okay you can Mm -hmm. spend a hold to get back to the nets and then Mm -hmm. um probably let's see do you have blind side um do you have... I have trick shot, or I could do a... I don't think it's going to be acrobatics or sneak. It. So it would probably be trusting fate can I, to I, trip him up. Can I... Or you could do... Uh, do any of your items have confused senses? Um, I don't think so. Oh, let me ask you. Weapon. Does, does this sword I just picked up have any <laughs> thing? This sword doesn't exist, so... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think so. Um, okay, this sword has cleave, stroma group... Vicious strike. Hmm. Yeah, none of those help me. Um, so I'm either going to trust fate, or would it could it be attempt a roguish feat? Um, only that has if to be it's a... yeah. It would be t- trust fate because you would be using a roguish feat that you don't have. Exactly. Okay. I get that so now. I think it would be blind side or sleight of hand. Okay, so I'm going to trust fate. So you're rolling, you're adding luck. Something is going to go wrong. Because that's that always happens when you trust fate, but... We'll see. Well, let me switch out one of these dice. Get rid of the bad dice. At least maybe I got rid of one bad one. I got... A six plus my luck, which is eight. Eight is pretty good. So an eight with the trust fate is a hit. You are going to scrape by um, with what you're doing. What are you doing? Um, I think that 
Roderick admired um, David's approach earlier with Dredge and the use of the um, net. This is uh, probably David knows that this was has sort of always been a, a subtle flaw in the Irie architecture and <laughs> now can be taken advantage once again. So Roderick does a quick dive, grabs that long blade um, and dives again to a fixture that has several um, ropes that lead up to these kind of netting above and I think he just starts slicing slices a couple different ropes um, this might even have an maybe it has like a little impact on some of the combat out in the uh, clearing here it it does and what ends up happening is that you draw the attention of some of the Irie uh, soldiers who are fighting, and they are making their way towards you. Um, as the nets fall, they catch a few of the soldiers, and they catch Callum, who uh, is trapped under these heavy ropes. David can see that there are now soldiers moving towards Roderick, and across that way. across town as Daisy rings the bells and looks out for goodies. She sees the fight in the square, these ropes coming down, and some soldiers with their armor glinting in the moonlight making their way towards Roderick. Oh, hell no. (laughs) (laughs) Roderick! Not her fearless leader! I'm coming! (laughs) David Todd Toddinson. It is your turn. Yes. Uh, I'm going to make a beeline for uh, Roderick. I want to get within reach uh, of Roderick. And uh, Is Roderick high up right now? Oh. Oh, you know what else? <laughs> Sorry. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll remember what I'm about to say. Roderick is... Uh, maybe Roderick's kind of um, just hovering off the ground, which is why he was traveling fast enough to like cut a couple of important um, ropes like, okay. consecutively. So, David. Clamoring over boxes and is sprinting. The, I, do I need to roll anything to get within reach of Roderick? That's my current, that's David's current goal. There's a lot of stuff happening. I think, yes, uh, we can do um, a roguish feat uh, if you have an appropriate one or, or trust fate. Mm. Or you could read a tense situation. and uh, But that would pause things for David for a moment and the guards might get there. Yeah. I don't know if hide or sneak would help me out. (laughs) Uh, I mean, do you, can can you figure out a way to use your, your super move again? My super. Oh, right. My super move. What's a super move? The one disappear into the darkness. Yeah. I want a super move. How do you get those? Complete your drive. Yeah. Oh. Oh, those things. Oh, man. I don't think I can. Um, I want to, but as soon as I do, I'm completely exhausted. Okay. So, um, you know, discretion's the better part of Valor. So uh, David's going to read the tense situation first and then hopefully figure out how to to get within reach of Roderick soon. Okay. I lucked out. My cunning is a two. Uh, So I get a eight. Eight. All right. Um, You may ask one question one question what's my best way through your best way through and through uh are you saying through the 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 melee that's happening or uh, through the the chaos through through this entire situation (laughs) 
the my best way through the distance. Okay. Between me and Roderick. Uh, you you easily find out the best way through the distance. You can you you survey the fight. You see the groups that are fighting. You see where the ropes are falling. You see the the netting on the ground. The people trying to escape. The uh, uh, denizens. The uh, Irie and um, the uh, alliance members who are just trying to escape now, trying to get out of here as as chaos ensues. And David spots the best way through. What does Daisy do? Well, if I'm allowed to sort of back up just a second before she saw yep. what was happening to Rod, I... Um, went from previous things when we accomplished our drive did the thing that we earned does that stay with us or yes, is that like a one-time thing okay so i had this awesome thing called loot and plunder yes this is when you loot a rich area for valuables roll with finesse i don't wow. know i mean i'm gonna i get to assume or guess is this a rich area does it have valuables she's certainly looking it is not it's an old Dang abandoned it. tower but it wasn't like belonging to like an old like monastery or church that just has relics and stuff, you know? No, like that's what I was picturing. Just an old tower. <sighs> All right, fine. I I do enjoy that like <laughs> your first thought like before checking on the battle. You ring the bell. <laughs> okay, I ring the bell. What is good around here? <laughs> nothing, nothing good. So fine. Sad. I guess I'll go back to fighting. Okay. Okay. Well then, wait. So, when she defeated all the bad guys, yes. does this not count as a chaos advance when I topple a tyrannical, dangerously overbearing figure or order? Um, no. no? So, it, it did previously because okay. it was a very specific uh, overbearing figure. Okay. These are part of a larger group that is overbearing. So, you would advance when you free this clearing of the Irie control. At the end of this battle, you will advance. Can't do that single-handedly, but okay. All right, then she. Why am I hearing myself in like an echo? That hasn't happened. You're before. the new Andrew. I know. <laughs> it's not a problem, I guess. Um, well, she flees to help Roderick, I guess. What How do she... you flee? You jumping out the window, going down the stairs. She's going to scurry down the stairs really fast. Okay. Oh, no, slide. Slide down the banister, obviously. Perfect. It's, it's yeah. spiral, obviously. Ooh, so fun. <laughs> Her tail's whipping back and forth. And runs out the door. Let's get... And... Yeah. Um, let's get your... So he's, he's kind of far away. So to get to him yeah. quickly... You could do, what do you have? Um, I would take an acrobatics. You could tell me what sort of cool acrobatic moves you got, you did to get to him quickly. What's faster than running as a mouse? <laughs> Jumping. Well, there's buildings in Spinning. the way. Roll. How do you get through the buildings or around the buildings or over the buildings? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... As, as uh, Doug said, that they have this, what did he say, a subtle flaw in the Irie architecture mm -hmm. with all the ropes overhead. Mm -hmm. There are bound to be stray ones here and there. They're all over the place, and yeah. So just dangling. So that is your closest hops, straight line, yeah. So she hops on the closest rooftop, grabs one, and like Tarzans it as far as she can, maybe multiple times until she just gets there. That's super fast and cool. All right. Roll and add How your finesse. Okay. Uh, where are my dice? There they are. Nine. Nine is... Plus two. Eleven, Eleven. is great. Uh, you do it without any, any bad things happening. Um, so, yeah. You uh, leap... I would say you you probably don't go down the stairs. You, you, we skipped the banister. You thought about the banister, but if you're swinging on oh. ropes, you're going straight out the window. 
Oh, well, I figured that was after. Like, she ran down out the door and then up a roof, grabbed the first ropes and kept going. Oh, these, but that's... these ropes are everywhere. Uh, okay, you could probably, so from the top, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so you get yeah. up there and you She's leap. already up high. Yeah, and grab okay. onto a rope and start swinging your way to Roderick, and you are going to get to Roderick before David does, even though David's close. She is feisty and passionate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roderick, this group of Irie soldiers is closing in on you. There are four of them. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Hmm. You hear, you you see Callum under the under the ropes, looking at these soldiers. Get him! <laughs> I was thinking about deploying a smoke bomb, but I don't know if there's yes. actually any benefit to doing it. What do you want to do? Do you cool. so like smoke bombs help you do your roguish feats, right? I don't have written down all of what they do. All I know is it helps me. It, it makes it so I can make hide. me go get that smoke bomb thing. <laughs> it makes it so I can I could hide basically. Do you do you have a hold left? Could you flavor it as a smoke bomb, but just spend your hold? I don't no. think there's any holds left. All right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, ideally, like, I would love to to drop a smoke bomb, and I wish I could pass, like, uh, advantages to my cohort so that we could, like, stealthily, smokily, like... Yeah, that doesn't happen. Just beat all... I know, I know it doesn't. <laughs> I was, Sounds awesome, though. That's the closest I can get to that. Okay. We can do a plan of attack together. Once oh. you all get together, yeah. So, my oh, I'm can there. we can we do it via uh, like uh, expressions while <laughs> we all make eye contact? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> what I remember from the smoke bomb is basically you can attempt a roguish feat. And if you do poorly, you can use a smoke bomb to ignore the risks. Mm. Other than that, you can use as many smoke bombs as you want. Like if you succeed, if you do well on the check, you can use a smoke bomb and it doesn't deplete your smoke bombs. Mm -hmm. But wait. Uh, my roguish feet. So your roguish like... feats are acrobatics and sneak. But say you wanted to hide or blindside or uh, do some sort of sleight of hand or something like that. You, you could would, do that with a smoke bomb? You would trust fate and then rather than suffering one of the risks because whenever you trust fate you're going to suffer one of the risks you can use a smoke mm -hmm. bomb and not have a risk. Not have a risk. That is like such a good item. What do you want to do? Uh... They're brandishing their swords. You can see the, the iridescence of their feathers as they make their way towards you. This battle feels like it's taken an hour and okay, 24 okay. minutes, but it's only taken Which it's, is because it's it has. Been minutes. <laughs> uh, blindside, maybe I want to do using a smoke bomb. That okay. makes sense to me. So you're going to blindside, so you're going to trust fate. So you're going to roll and you're going to add your mm -hmm. luck. Oh my god. I'm not having a good roll night. Throw those dice out. Aww. I got a three. Okay, plus your luck. Stop that. A plus two my luck would be five. two. Uh, five. Okay. So bad. Um, how's Daisy's exhaustion doing? I have two out of four. Uh, your helping would not bring it over, so that is not helpful. Um, oh yeah, the help and interfere thing. Mark exhaustion to add one or two, one to the other. Okay, so what does Roderick do? What does Roderick attempt to do? <laughs> uh, so sad. Roderick pulls out one of these smoke bombs. Thinks to himself. It's a dud. <laughs> <laughs> I knew these would come in handy eventually. Let's see here. Reaches around in his uh, his pockets. 
Oh, it, was a band, it was a bandolier. Yeah. No, no, no. He's got the smoke bomb in hand. Okay. He has no way to light it. He realizes. But he has to use Especially it. Especially when flying. Unless you want to suffer some negative effects here. Um, so he... Uh, unlit. He throws it at one of these... Uh, uh, ivory, just the, unlit. Yeah, the soldier just that's gonna hurt, right? Swings at it with his sword like a baseball bat, and knocks it. Oh, that's knocks cool. it out and away, damaging it. You're gonna mark one of your uh, two smoke bomb wear. Okay. And David. Uh, question I have at the top of David's turn. Mm -hmm. With Dridge out of the picture, have I freed a group of denizens from oppression? I hope you have. There are still Iri soldiers here. Okay. So I don't think so. so nice. Yeah. You're right, close. Well, but... I'll have all my problems. All right. I got to do. So I think. It's fair to say that I'm not within reach of Roderick as I wish to be. No. I see the way through. Um, and you get a plus one the, on the rolls path, acting on that. The, the path through doesn't have to be with my paws. I think I'm going to attempt a trick shot once again to distract or otherwise incapacitate these guards bearing down on Roderick. I will allow that plus one to cool. carry over. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> so you are... Make sure this is my finesse. Taking advantage of the environment, you have to mark wear on your item. Mm -hmm. And roll with finesse. Thus marked. Uh, oh, I'm at a seven. Because <laughs> I had that seven. other plus one. Okay. Um, yeah, so you have a, a choice now. You get to choose two. Your shot lands in any target of your choice within range, even if it's behind cover or hidden. Your shot strikes a second available target of your choice. Your shot cuts something, breaks something, knocks something over. Or your shot distracts an opponent, providing an opportunity. So you choose two. Mm. So we had two soldiers bearing down on Roderick. So I think four. that I need... To, we've got four? Come four. on. All yeah. right. Come on. So definitely one of them is uh, strikes a second available target. Okay. And then I think uh, distracts an opponent and provides an opportunity. Okay. So uh, I, I think David, you know, he pulls back out that fancy new bow that he's got and he can do all these trick shots with and he pulls it back and he lets it fly and it is just over their heads um and hits a you know a stack of barrels that causes a barrel to tumble over onto the the two soldiers Ooh. yeah it tumbles over on them and they uh uh they they fall under its weight and the uh, a third one sort of looks for where that shot came from, and Daisy comes swinging in. What do you do? Yes, my time has come. Your time has come. <laughs> okay. I since I'm I'm up above and I'm on the ropes already. I want to attempt a sneak attack via blindside. Can I do that? Yes. It's a roguish feat I have. You, since we are in combat, I think it would be better for you to use one of your weapon moves. If oh. being honest, you, we can okay. we can say that it's a sneak attack if you do well. It can be a narrative sneak attack. Okay. <laughs> What's the point? What What does that mean to sneak attack without a weapon? So, we would use blindside probably better in a situation where nobody. Where, where there wasn't like a, a fight already happening, like you would roll blindside and then you get to uh, engage in melee or one of these other things without having somebody try to fight you back. Okay. But since we're sort of in a, a structured like you go, then 
then Roderick goes, then David goes. Then I will switch to the weapons page. Do you want to use your shield? Do you swing in with your shield forward? Yeah. So your shield has some nice grapple with an enemy things. Let's check that out. So your shield is nasty. When you Oh, I don't get to know what this new shield is because it's not on my paper. No, it is in our and it's in our group chat. So It yeah. is? Sorry. I want to see that. Where is that? Uh, a couple it's, oh, it's like, like a, a long week time ago. a week up in our chat. Oh, um, well, oh it's right well, there. I got it. When you grapple with an enemy, both yours and your enemy's first choice is doubled in effect. So your choices are like strike a fast blow, inflict injury, uh, wear them down, mark exhaustion, exploit a weakness, um, uh, disengage. You can, and it's also distracting. So when you grapple with an enemy, while you wield or display this item, you can mark exhaustion to change a seven to nine to a ten, or a miss to a seven to nine. So they all exhaust people, but it doesn't hurt anybody. Oh, it'll hurt people. Because okay. I didn't see the word. Gonna it's gonna hurt. Harm or injury. That, that, so that's I... all under grapple an enemy. Okay, let's do that. I'm assuming we talked about there were like spikes, yeah, like around. Sure. But there's also like one. There's one. It's not big. super acute, but it's like an obtuse, mm -hmm. big spike in the yeah. middle, shallow. Yep. But that's gonna hurt. Yeah, it is. It's like iron. You might so, say it's nasty. Like, bam. It's a nasty shield. So you're gonna roll and you're gonna roll with might. Okay. I keep losing my dice. <laughs> Ten. A ten. Ten plus what? Do I do a plus yeah, anything? Plus your uh, your might is what? Probably two. 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 So a twelve. Yep. Twelve. It's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. You have the best dice. I know. Um. All right. So you and I are choosing simultaneously. You you uh, swing in and hit them with your shield. Um. You. Best shot. Uh. Let's see. Yeah. Do I have to mark anything against myself for that? I need, by the way, I just need you to, like, very clearly tell me everything to check sure. at the end of each yep. thing, or I might not. Okay. <laughs> so if you're, look, sure. if you're looking at grapple an enemy, you, know, you may now choose, um, you oh. may now choose one of those four things. There's the harm we were looking for. Okay. <laughs> Strike a fast blow. Wear them down. Exploit weakness. <laughs> withdraw. Just never. Um, definitely inflict the injury with a fast blow, please. Okay. You, is that, does that work? Inflict. You strike a fast blow and inflict injury. Yes, that works. Yes, please. So, the way grapple an enemy works is that you are now fighting these mm -hmm. people. And you are going to fight until yeah. you run away or die. That sounds that sounds like easy. Um, I'm also going to say she's ready. That fearless. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So they're going to take a hit, and they are going. And now we both choose the choose another thing. I'll, we'll choose simultaneously, and we'll say. So make your choice and don't wait. Wait. What, what am I, like, from this yeah, list? Yeah, make a choice from that list. A, like a second thing already? Yeah. Immediately after? Don't tell me, and I'm going to pick one, because okay. we're doing okay, this at the same think. time now. All right. Hold on. So you do this until you run away or die. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Damn the consequences. But, uh, I think it's great. I just, I'm clarifying, you're going to keep picking things. I get it. Okay, cool. One of them is run away. Yes. I thought, no. Just say no. Thank you. I, I'm just going to, can I just keep inflicting injury? You, that sounds good can. to me. But you're supposed to say it at the same time as Mark. <gasps> oh. They also inflict injury. Okay. I have it written Ooh. down if you need proof. I, I put a dot by it with my pen. So what, what does this look like? You swing in. You hit them quickly with the shield. 
the uh, the sound of it, the metal against metal reverberates, the uh, the clang yeah. reverberates through the square as you barrel into these people. You uh, keep pushing them back with your shield away from Roderick. And as you do, they're swinging in over the top around the sides and trying to hit you. And one of them does. And a sword moves in and slices you across the arm. And you mark one injury. You've done so. And now we choose again. We keep it secret until Mark says otherwise. Okay. I'm ready. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see that one. I didn't read it close enough. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is rough. Okay. If, do you... If if you get tired enough, do you die? You can. <laughs> if you get all four exhaustions, Mark? If you get you all four die? exhaustions, you you are out of the scene. You are, you are passed out. And if somebody tries to hit you, that's not going to be very good. Is there... Are we allowed to know what our current hearts meters are at? Your own? <laughs> like, n- like the bad guys? No. Yeah. No. Well, that is scary. Yes. <laughs> mm, but that's not fair. You ready? No. <laughs> What is uh, Roderick doing while well, as Daisy swings in and starts pummeling at these people to protect him? Um, I think Roderick uh, was probably going to engage some of these um, fighters, though it would have been quite intimidating because there were four of them. Um, do, two of them have been dispatched by David. Two of them were hit and uh, are trying to get themselves up as Daisy swings in and starts pummeling at them. And what, there are two others that are... Yeah, that are trying to stab at Daisy. Oh, well then he's probably going to try and, like, attack whoever is, like, the most threatening right now. Okay. Are we saying you get to divide her, her little... Thing we're doing with him intervening here and there? I just want to know what Roderick's attempting to do while this happens. What did you choose? And me? Yeah. Okay, one more question. Okay. <laughs> I assumed I was I assumed I was um just in grappling with like one person. Are we saying it's multiple You're people? You're grappling with a group of people. You're in close combat with all all Surely's... of the people who are attacking Roderick. It looks so cool though. Yeah. But surely I have so many like special things for groups. Do any of those come into play? Um, I when can't you're die. Done with the grapple, you're you're in you're the like grapple until does. you die or run away. Shh. Yeah, the 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 iron hide thing. Yeah. Does that mean I you, could have not gotten that last? No, because you still have to take one. And okay. uh, they, but you did inflict an extra harm on them. Write that down, I did. please. <laughs> okay. You ready? <laughs> okay. Does it? But is that over now, or does like each time the iron hide? Oh, work, it works every time. That's just one. Okay, it's all. I'm gonna. Yes, I'm ready. What do you do? Same thing as last. They time. try and run away. Inflict an injury. How do you take them out? You're just, you're just coddling me. No, they <laughs> ran out of room to take injuries. They're gonna run away. But you got you really? got there first. What did you, what did you do to save Roderick? As Roderick gets his axe ready, and begins to charge at these people. Uh, she would have just, like, she had her shield thing, but then she's also got her axe and does one quick, like, schwa, and they probably, like, jump to, like, not get sliced yeah, and, then, and run off. No, no, no. They jump to not get sliced, and Daisy shoves them with the shield and knocks them all into each other. Right in the face. Yeah, and they're all out. Yeah. <laughs> But some of them ran away, right? No. You said they had to run away. They did away. not run away. You got there first. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought, okay, great. Cool. I thought you said they ran away, so I believe that. All right. <laughs> Victory! Yeah! <laughs> I think we're out of uh, structured combat now. So Excellent. Daisy shouts, Victory! Yeah. <laughs> 
Roderick has to like was dive bombing on the these individuals because it it didn't look good for a second, and all of a sudden it's completely uh, fine. And he has to like flap to slow his uh, <laughs> descent and lands like softly on the on the dirt and cobblestone. I wish you would have yelled at me to do that because then I could have gotten my drive for obeying at great cost to myself. I tried to I tried to speak for uh, nonverbal communication. <laughs> <laughs> we would make eye contact, all the three of us, and have an entire plan figured out. I wanted to do that. I just forgot. Mark was moving forward too quickly. <laughs> I think Mark would let us do it while you were grappled. Oh, okay. Dang it. So close to drive. Oh, well. We'll say that that arrow definitely saved Roderick from significant danger, though, right? I mean, I think he, he was going to get attacked. Saved Roderick from significant danger. Oh. Teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. But but, but it is a drive of mine, so I can advance now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not that it really matters, because as as Daisy knocks the last of these soldiers out, the the town square begins to to quiet you can see wosi gathering up the net with a few other glade guards that has callum in it and they begin to drag him off you see a few other guards just because you have your eyes open you um, are watching you're vigilant you see these people off in the distance uh moving through alleys. Um, you can just catch the glint of their armor and you see two cloaked birds moving with them uh, on their way towards the... Uh, there are more bad guys already? Towards the exit of this place. They're with glade guards. Oh, okay. Okay. You had a deal. Okay. These are the remaining goshawks. Moving in the shadows, trying to escape the the fighting in the glade. The remaining iry soldiers, those who are still left standing, are, are gathered up by Alliance fighters. You see um, Dooley with his big blacksmith hammer um, marching them towards the guardhouse. The jails there no doubt filling up tonight um, as things begin to calm down you see the sky above you begin to lighten the first bits of dawn appearing ah the dawn of a new day and the era well done everyone that was amazing are you okay I Rod, I'm I'm fine. I've took taken a, a blow, but I'll nothing nothing I can't handle. Well done, both of you. We've all done well tonight, and thank you both for your help. Thank you for your assistance. I don't know what a, what I would have done if those four had descended upon me. Of course, we're always here for you. Hey. And no. yeah, good. Just why? Why would the blacksmith be running people to the jail? I didn't get that part. The blacksmith is part going? of the Woodland Alliance. He's taking okay. the the evil Iri to the jail cells. They've surrendered. I think it has something to do with Dridge laying face down over there in the mud. Ooh, can I can I check his pockets? <laughs> Yes. How does David feel about that? Oh, I'm done with him. <laughs> you know, what if be respectful of territory and all that. Yeah, you check. Does he count as an area for valuables? <laughs> um, no, because he has very specific things. Uh, you find uh, his ceremonial war axe. It's fancy. I, I get. I find yeah. it. Yours is probably better. Well, yeah. Because it's it's ceremonial. 
But it probably has like sparkly it's things. It's probably on it. sellable, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I get I get to keep it. Yeah. She looks around like, can I? Take yeah. This? You also you also find an ivory medal, um, something that uh, is sort of symbolic of uh, his power. Ooh. Yeah, you have all decreased is your like reputation the with city? the ivory. <laughs> do I get to decrease? No, you don't get to do it again. No. Oh, darn it. <laughs> oh, does this finally count as toppling the person? It does. The, 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 you have the, toppled. Yes. Uh, the leaders of this has of this glade. And as the so I yeah, yeah the sun begins to rise and the uh, rem- remnants of the woodland alliance you can see that there are fewer people here than there were gathered last night when roderick gave a speech Um, they begin to uh they they pick up their wounded they cover the dead in blankets and um, begin to try to get back to or or try to figure out what the new version of of normal is in the glade and you see uh, Osha and Elaine and another mouse you don't recognize and um, and uh, Wosi all sort of gathered talking discussing what is what is next the possibilities the uh, uh, the Roderick uh, while they're all discussing what they think should happen next uh, you know you played a not insignificant role in fleeing freeing this glade from its troubles uh if you were to stand on a box and make a speech pretty sure it would go a long way and everyone looking at you for the leadership as opposed to this group over here just saying we all know you're the one that's that's best for the job boss yeah truly everyone will agree would one of the two of you fetch me the tallest box in sight (laughs) i might need help dave can you come help i I see it as we both dart off in opposite directions and both come <laughs> running back with the biggest what box we can idiots. carry. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Stack, Stack the two of them on top of each other. <laughs> Two's better than one. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy remember, we have to stand on either side. Arms crossed. Look to Big shield. Oh, big axe. Oh, no, no. I pull out my fancy new ceremonial axe. Oh, no, that one. Not things. that one, Daisy. No. Why not? It just, just use the other one. That was Dridge's axe. Not a good time. I thought it would show Everyone power. Everyone soldiers axe. Don't don't use that can one. I, no. Can I wear the medal of power? No, don't say do, I have power. We just Roger, coupled the iry. Don't put on the trappings of the iry to tell no, no, everyone that we're in charge. That's a spoil of war. It's yours. Okay. Okay, boss. Your pocket. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to yell out and call everybody to be quiet? Listen. I was waiting for Mark to figure out what he's going to ask me to do. <laughs> you going to ask me to roll something? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm going to give uh, some kind of speech. Is this the... Okay, so is this the um, the ironic torture of, uh, of Roderick's mission? Is the speech is going to use, like, charm, and he's not that charming, <laughs> actually, despite, uh, like... Yeah, it's going to use charm. Okay. Since you said so. Um, how, you to... how exhausted is everyone else? Well, you said I got to advance, so I have no exhaustion. Okay. Me too, me too. Oh, wait. You got, you got to advance as well? Did I say that? Yeah. All right. Wait. Fine. Yes. Wait. wait. <laughs> Toppled the clearing. Wait. Did I? Did I? I did my drive. Does that uh, eliminate my exhaustion? No, it does not. Okay. Oh, maybe not then. Hold on. <laughs> So your drive does I, not. Your drive doesn't do your, that. Your, your nature. Oh, right. it's the nature. Yeah, I have three. So you, I have three exhaustions. Oh, Gosh. okay. Wait, Darn wait a it. second, Mark. I, I, I definitely did. My nature is to clear exhaustion track when you dramatic when you take dramatically unnecessary risks to show off. What was your showing off? Like the bomb thing. Um, when I, like. Hmm. Standing on top of two crates to give a speech to people, even though you're not good at speeches. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's... I think that means you're going to clear your exhaustion after you make your speech. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I'm still tired. Half tired. So, Roderick is going to roll with charm. 
to okay. persuade after you make your speech. After um, I make it. Yeah, I want to hear your speech. Okay. Um, Daisy and David may mark an exhaustion to add a plus one to the roll after mm-hmm. after he rolls if you if you choose. Yes, I choose. After. I help by getting everyone's attention. Yeah, you don't have to yet. It's not after yet. So let's hear let's hear what Roderick has to say. As, as people see him uh, standing up on top of two crates and Wosi sort of looks over his shoulder like what's going on? What did what what is he doing? I don't know. Two crates? Two crates. <laughs> people of Peliniki Glade. People of the Woodland Alliance. Uh, past supporters of the Fallen Irie. Hear me, Roderick the Bat. I come to you as as a as an ally, a supporter of of the vagabonds of the Woodland Glade and of the new perhaps order that could bring this glade this woodland uh, together we have all suffered we have all felt the trials and tribulations of underneath the the iron beak of the eyrie and the turmoil continually caused by our lovely supporters the woodland alliance now I ask you, who will rise up two boxes high and stand so tall and rule and and bring us back together when our rulers are in turmoil, in jails? I would like to throw my name into the hat. I believe that me and my supporters would be just rulers, just... Uh, voices for the people. We've always been for the people. And if you'd, if you'd support us, I guarantee that this woodland would be better for it, and so would you. Now. So much better. <laughs> oh, hail Roderick, the mayor of Pelaniki Glade. You all heard it. He's the mayor now. <laughs> Long live the mayor! Roll. Mayor Roderick! <laughs> okay, I'm rolling my charm. <laughs> I think you heard how we were helping. <laughs> okay. I have zero charm, but I yep. did get I, I did I did get an eight. <laughs> how could this possibly end? <laughs> Who's marking exhaustion? We can get it to a ten if we both help. Does that does that make a difference? I am reluctant to add another exhaustion, to be quite honest. But I will if he asks me to. Because it's a great... Uh, because it is uh, a great cost. Cost. It's a great cost. Uh, yeah. Uh, when when Roger finishes his speech and he looks for applause, he looks to the two of you and says, Okay, come on, come on. Now, now. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. Oh, no, yes. yes. Daisy, Daisy. Both of you, please. What are we? What are you asking us to uh, do? Exert some energy, a little uh, hooray, fanfare, hooray. please. <laughs> and Daisy's like, "Hooray!" I need to sit down. <laughs> what do we both do? Yeah. We're both gonna pass out after this. Um, and you get you get a little a little bit of uh, applause. You get some cheers from the crowd. Um, people are buying into your speech, and as you come down from the the boxes, um, um, Wosi comes up and shakes your hand. That's a that was a mighty fine speech there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Frederick. I think you've got the people on on your side, but. I think we we want to do things a little bit differently than than the uh, the goshawks did. At least that's what uh, Osha and Elaine are, are telling me. I think we're going to uh, hold elections, but you're definitely in the running, and I think you've got some people's votes. Well, I did say put my name in the hat. Uh, 
and I hope that the people of Peloniki Glade do as well. And uh, other people start coming up and patting Roderick on the back and shaking hands and admiring the giant sword that he stole from Callum. Ooh, shiny. Yeah. And can uh, can David and Daisy be like back to back against the box, completely yeah. asleep now? Yeah. <laughs> and the <laughs> uh, we we zoom out from the square where um, the where the clearing is free, and the the people have the ability to rule themselves at least for now. If they and pick then, the right ruler, if they, yeah, we'll see. And will they be holding elections? How they, will we They will be holding <laughs> elections. Daisy slept through that part of the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, huh? Elections? I what? He was putting his name in the hat, but I didn't know what, what that literally meant. The next day, what is Roderick doing? Um, Spider ring. <laughs> that's definitely on his mind. Uh... Because I think his his they've talked about it a lot, and uh, his friends need need that uh, symbol of gratification. I think the spider ring is probably first thing on the list of that morning. Yep. So you head to the the blacksmith and meet Dooley, who uh, hands you a, a trio of of iron rings. They look yes. exactly like a Halloween ring, one of those plastic spiders, except they have uh, the mark of uh, Dooley the blacksmith on the back. Duly, to me, these are more beautiful than the ring I found and gave you. And I thank you so much for your expertise, craftsmanship. It's beautiful. Look, we have the same ring, Roderick. Look, we match now. <laughs> we... Best friends forever. <laughs> we're the, the pioneers and founders of a new order. And this ring is a symbol of that. And I thank you so much, both of you, for your courage and dedication to my cause. We see uh, Dooley hold up a, a paw. You see, I've refitted the ring for myself as well, so. Dooley. Yeah, you're one of us. Dooley, have I ever talked to you about some of my... Ideas, my dreams, Dooley. Now that you've got that ring on, I could see you. I don't know, accompanying us on a journey. Ooh. Does this mean we can count on your vote? And we cut to the next scene. <laughs> the jail is dark. You can hear the soft murmur of, um, of. Uh, Irie soldiers in in different cells and David alone approaches the cell where the silent paw is David takes a moment to uh, jingle the keys to the jail cell make sure he's got the silent paw's attention you see that eye shine glare from the back of the cell under the hood. And don't let it be said that I'm not a man of my word. We had a deal. Told us where your cash was. But I did mention that if you failed to tell us everything, there would be consequences. So, I know a crafty cat like you would be able to figure their way out of this <clears throat> we're going to call it even but I'm going to put these and he takes the keys and he walks over to the far door he hangs it on a little bit of the outcropping rock way overhead over here I don't want to see you again I can ask Dridge how that goes but I wish you the best of luck and then he leaves. Where do we see Daisy? All right. We. OK, 
Okay, so we were just at Dooley's. Did we, or do we all get to the jail, but only we're all at the jail no. together? Everyone's right? getting their own scene or something. So okay. you can. No, I know, you but can I all, heard that he, yeah. he went to the paw by himself to that yeah. cell, but I didn't open yeah. it all. So this could be by yourself or with everybody. So Daisy has this thing, this like, this fairy tale that she chases where she has been hearing for ages about the rebel pirate Captain uh, Captain Sparrowhawk. And she hears the, the he's so notorious and she's heard a lot and she seeks out more stories wherever she goes. And so she wants to go find, I don't know, she wants to know who in town would be most likely to tell about this guy because she thinks that there is a big treasure left behind by Captain Sparrowhawk and she is ultimately a big treasure hunter at heart and wants that treasure. You go back down to the I don't know where she You would go. go back down to the beer borough and okay. uh, up to the bar and you speak with the the mouse behind the bar. And this is one of the one of the three people who or four people who was speaking with Elaine and Osha and Wosie, and um, as you go up and you ask about Sparrowhawk, and um, she says, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> no, I'm I'm thinking of what um, to say. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was writing stuff down. I didn't see your face. So I wasn't sure. What do you want with old Sparrowhawk? I hear that he's the meanest pirate this side of the. Uh, the woodlands. Well, yeah, but what I hear is he's that meanness wasn't for nothing. He's accrued the biggest treasure of any pirate, and I want in. Well, unfortunately, you're pretty landlocked here in Pelaniki Glade. I've heard that he has a home base somewhere in the woods because that's the where you'd least expect it, right? away from the water and maybe it's hiding somewhere cave root tunnel well i have heard that the river under the under the town flows out to uh to a cove exactly. out east i think if you if you really want to pursue this and i wouldn't suggest it knowing this guy's reputation i think you're going to want to go to bertram's it. cove What's the, when's the last time anybody's heard of him, of actually knowing that he's, like, alive? Do we, when's the last time anybody's seen him? You hear somebody from across the bar, he's alive. I saw him two weeks ago. You, sir. Me, Who sir. Are you? <laughs> My name's Jerry. Jerry. Jerry the what? Mm. What, what animal is Jerry? Uh, stoat. Yes. Two weeks ago, tell me all uh, about yeah. it. Yeah, we were out sailing in the waters, and the m- biggest, meanest ship came and attacked our boat, and they stole everything we had. That had to be Sparrowhawk. They were flying a flag of uh, some kind of skull. Of course. I wonder. Could you could you describe the ship? <laughs> it was big and it looked mean. Big, big and mean. black ship with dark sails. I mean, that sounds like everything that Daisy has, that I have ever heard about his ship. It must be and him. If you go out to Bertram's Cove, you got to watch out for the Marquis Sot. Have you heard of the Marquis Sot? Mm. I've heard a little. Mm, yeah. They're There's no good. But maybe Maybe these so mice we, here in this glade can get you in touch with someone from the Alliance there. Ooh, okay. They know the mice here are in touch with the Marcus Sot there? Oh, the, the Alliance? I don't know. They all know each other, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I don't follow the politics so well. I'll have Good to look on into you. that. Da- David will probably know. 
did so just to, just one more question jerry were you in bertram's cove when you were attacked i was just on the, the high adventure? seas the high seas oh so why do you think i should go to the cove that's where i heard he was <laughs> okay Thank you, good sir, for all of your helpful information. This is very exciting. You should buy me a drink. I was just thinking that myself. <laughs> and then she whispers to Elaine, give him a soft cider. <laughs> <laughs> On it. <laughs> all, she, she's like, here you go. But then, she, Daisy remembers something. And she asks Elaine quietly one more time, Hey, do you remember we were talking a while back and you mentioned something about the goshawk matriarch and some jewel encrusted knives? <laughs> I did mention something about that, didn't did I? We have... Yeah. Did you uh, happen to hear if that ended up being what was taken from the mayor's office or was that just a rumor? I think that was just a rumor. I don't know. Nobody's been in the old Gossock estate since they left town. The whole family left town? Yeah. Of course they did. Yeah, but yeah, they were all part of the Irie. Some of them in Pine Bluffs. Again, boxes. I don't follow the politics real well. <laughs> well, thank, thanks for your help. You've been great. It's been great visiting. Thanks for the drink. She tosses her another coin. <laughs> she tips Elaine well. Elaine doesn't work at the bar. Wait, She's just what, why did I get that name? I... Oh, right. No, the, the person you were speaking to behind the bar is a Sorry. mouse whose name you did not get. Who was uh, part of the alliance, one of the leadership. Wait, so who told me what? <laughs> I thought it, was... it was a mouse named did Jessamy, you who you uh, did not get a name from and who you've just seen around town a couple times. Okay. Though I, I think that? Daisy I was probably know. calling... Jessamy, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You can get the name wrong. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. I swear I heard you say that I was talking to nope. Elaine. Where did I get that? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So um, Daisy leaves and Jessamy just shakes her head. And so embarrassing. she meets back up with her uh, fellow vagabonds. Greetings, fellow va vagabonds. How are we doing? Gotta do the greeting. What's the greeting? Spider. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lame. <laughs> so what's next? Well, I'm not sure when the next election will be for the mayor. They're still cleaning lots of stuff up around Peliniki Glade. Uh... Mark, what, what, what? You tell me. I'm, I'm I don't want to make up everything. You tell what do me I... what you want to do. Like, this is this is like the last two minutes. So, you all outline the plans that you want to make and don't decide on any of them. And then next time we'll meet up and say how they all went wrong and how, why you had to leave the glade. Um, K Calum Gosshog will be. Calum Gosshog will. Be at some sort of trial, and then, I mean, the glade's free. There'll be an election at some point. My name will be in the hat. But until then, hey, do you, do you want us to run a campaign for you? I think we could make a real difference here. I mean, that'd be gr that'd be great uh, if I could ask that of you. I mean, of course. I, I've asked Dooley. I don't know if du Dooley's mulling it over. He's busy with the whatnot. Oh, oh. Yeah. How much do you really? want to be stuck in a city as mayor. Just curious. Easy. There's more money in being a mayor. What adventure! I mean, personally, I'd love to be like a... a, a just... A wandering. a wandering mayor. Mailing in my wishes. Uh, mailing in your wishes. Collecting what I need from, from Pelaniki Glade. And perhaps I'll perhaps I'll sneak that into the finer print of my campaign. Um, but there's 
there's so much of the woodlands to to know, and it is it would be a tragedy to spend so much time and only just and only learn so little. Uh, I agree with that. A right shame. Yeah. If only there was promise of treasure somewhere that we could go. Well, I heard. <laughs> I anybody ever been to Bertram's Cove? Bertram's Cove. Oh, Bertram's Cove. <laughs> oh, you've heard of it. Oh, my my brother Johan. Johan? Who, does he live there? Tell me, what's going I on? I don't know if he still lives there. It's been years. And it's been years since I've been to Bertram's Cove. What have you heard? Well, are you guys up for a treasure hunt? <laughs> <laughs> 